Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using the campaigns feature in pipe drive. Now I made a video about campaigns about two years ago when it first came out. There's been a few updates since then. So I thought it was time for a refresher. If you have any comments or questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Pipedrive account. Maybe you want to automate more of your sales process or automate email nurture campaigns to your customers. Then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive support options. Before you get started, you might be asking yourself the question, why would I use Pipedrive campaigns instead of using some other email marketing tool like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, many of which have been around for a lot longer and are very powerful? The answer that I often give to our clients is, if you just need to do some simple email marketing, you want to send out a newsletter every couple of weeks or once a month maybe, and you want to do some simple email nurture, then using Pipedrive campaigns is a great option because it doesn't require any additional software, you're already signed up to Pipedrive, and you don't have to worry about integrating third-party tools, which often requires extra software like Zapier or OutFunnel. By using Pipedrive campaigns, you make marketing to your prospects and customers easier because you're doing everything inside one tool where you've got your contacts already set up. Now, if you're doing more complex email marketing, maybe if you're doing A-B testing of different content or subject lines, or you have more sophisticated automated sequences, you may want to consider a more powerful email marketing tool like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, which have some of those capabilities. Currently, Campaigns is a little bit more basic, which actually I find is fine for most Pipedrive users. Another question you probably have is, what is this going to cost? Now, Campaigns is an add-on which you add on to your existing Pipedrive subscription. So you will be on one of these plans, Essential Advanced Professional Power or Enterprise for your Pipedrive account. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see various add-ons, including Campaigns, which is an additional monthly or annual fee. And the exact amount you pay per month will depend on the number of subscribed contacts in your account. Now, the best way to actually see what this is going to cost is to go to your billing page, scroll down to the add-ons, and you can see if you're not signed up for campaigns already, there's an option to view a trial offer. Now, on this page, you can change the number of subscribed contacts uh, that you're going to be adding to your account. So you can see here for a thousand subscribers, we are starting at $16 per month. Now, of course, these prices are susceptible to change. And if you change this slider, let's say if we go up to 50,000 contact, uh, 50,000 subscribers, you can see the cost for your company per month. Now, when you activate the campaigns add-on, you will probably be asked some questions from Pipedrive about where your subscribers come from and how you ask for consent. This is very standard practice for email marketing services. Uh, most email providers want to know, have you received consent? And, and you need to prove that before you actually are allowed to use this feature. Uh, a big no-no is buying lists of contacts, uploading it, and then marketing to them. With most email service providers, you do need to have consent from the subscriber before you can actually send marketing material. Now, once you've been approved to use campaigns, you can come to the campaigns option here in the sidebar, and we can start to input some settings and build your first campaign. Now, this is just my demo account, so you can actually see at the top here, it's actually asking me to answer some questions about how I get my email contacts before I can start uh, using the campaigns feature. Now, once all that's sorted and I'm ready to go, the first thing I would do is navigate to the settings tab here and input some details about your sending information. So you can see here, I've set up my sending name and the reply to email. This is basically when I send a marketing email or campaign from Pipedrive, what is the name and address going to look like in the recipient's inbox? So in this case, it's gonna look like Paul Miners is the sender, or I could change this to my company name if I want it to look like the email has come from my company. Uh, as part of um, complying with privacy permissions, I also do need to provide the uh, address of my organization, and that's going to go into the footer of my emails. 
Now I can set up additional senders. Maybe I want to send emails um, from different people on my team. Um, maybe I want to send an email as me to my contacts. You can add additional senders here and that way I can send more personal campaigns just to my subscribers. Next, if we come over to this domain authentication tab, I highly recommend authenticating your domain before you send your first campaign. This is gonna ensure you have the best deliverability. And in order to authenticate your domain, you wanna follow the instructions here. You're going to have to input some DNS records on your uh, in, in your domain settings. So you'll need to go to wherever your domain is hosted. And Pipedrive does have some walkthroughs here for common hosts like GoDaddy, uh, Namecheap, and so on. And so you can input those DNS records to authenticate your domain. Now with that setup done and out of the way, the next step is to update your contacts and identify which contacts should be subscribed. Now keep in mind, again, when you subscribe a contact, they need to have provided consent. So ideally they've opted in through your website. Maybe they've provided consent when you've attended some trade show or exhibition and they've signed up to receive updates. And these are the contacts you're actually going to pay for as subscribers. So it could be that you have 10,000 contacts in your Pipedrive account and 1,000 of them are actually subscribed to receive your marketing updates. That means you're going to pay for 1,000 subscribers. Now, when you navigate to a contact, like I've got Tim Cook here, you should see this marketing section on the sidebar where you can see their email address and if they are subscribed to receive updates. If you're not seeing this marketing section, make sure in your manage sidebar sections, you've turned on the marketing section here. So if I need to, I can manually unsubscribe the contact if I ever need to. I can also navigate to the people list and I can see a list of all my contacts and I can bring in the marketing status as a separate column. And I can do this by clicking the little cogwheel icon here, searching for marketing status, and now I can bring it in as a column. This then gives me the option to select a bunch of contacts at once, or I can select all at the top here, and I can bulk edit the marketing status if I want to subscribe or unsubscribe a group of contacts all at once. A very easy way to get contacts to subscribe to updates is to request consent when they opt in on your website. And the easiest way to do that is using a Pipedrive web form. So if we go to the leads section and then come to web forms here, I have a bunch of forms already set up and I have one here called download brochure. So maybe I want to send a product brochure um, and people are gonna subscribe to updates and future marketing emails when they request this download. Now you can have a look at the linked video up here about how to get started with Lead Booster, where I talk about web forms in a bit more detail. But essentially what I've done is I've created this simple form where I've requested the person's name, email, phone, and then here I'm asking for their marketing status. So let me um, remove this for a sec and I'll show you how to add that in. I just simply click the plus button here. Now I'm gonna input an input field and I want this to update the person marketing status at the top there. And I can put in my message. So I'm going to say, yes, I'd like to be contacted by email or phone. And I can put some additional help text in to um, explain, you know, in this case, please check this box in order to receive our brochure. So I've got that field here in my form. And so now when somebody puts in their name, email and phone, they can tick this box and they are providing, uh, providing consent to receive future marketing emails. And that's gonna set their marketing status to subscribed. And the third and final way that you can import subscribed contacts to your account, and this is particularly useful if you're coming from a tool like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, maybe you've got a list of subscribers already, is you can import the person's name, email, and you can set their marketing status in a spreadsheet. So you can import that CSV file into Pipedrive and set their marketing status to subscribed. Now I'm not gonna go into all of that now, but check out this linked video up here where I show how to import CSVs to Pipedrive. Okay, if you're following along, we've applied for campaigns and you've been approved. We've input your sending information and company details. You've authenticated your domain and you've now subscribed some contacts. So I think we're finally ready to actually create your first campaign. To do that, you're going to want to come back to this campaigns tab and then go to email campaigns. 
Now, let me briefly touch on email campaigns versus automated campaigns. Email campaigns is where you would send a one-time campaign. So if you have a weekly or monthly newsletter that you send to customers or some group of contacts, you would send that as a, an email campaign. You would use automated campaigns if you want to build some kind of nurture sequence. You create the campaigns here in this automated campaigns tab, and then you actually build the sequence using Pipedrive's automation features. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but click the linked video up here where I show how to get started with automation in Pipedrive. I'm just going to do a simple newsletter style email. So I'm going to go back to email campaigns and click the green plus email campaign button. To start, I'm going to give my campaign a name. So I'm just going to use the date and I'm just going to call it newsletter. I can then choose who are the recipients that I want to send my campaign to. So I could say, right, I want to send the campaign to all of my contacts. I could choose my name. And so any contacts that I am the owner of, I can and who are subscribed, I'm going to send that campaign to that group. And I can click here to view the recipients. So these are the contacts that I own who are subscribed. Or if I need to, I can use any of my filters that I've already created, or I can create new filters here if I want to find uh, contacts in my account that have certain criteria. Maybe I want to find people that have our um, customer label, for example. So I can build a filter and I can identify the specific contacts that I want to send an email to. Next, I can customize the sender name and email. Now, this is going to default to whatever I put in earlier, so you can see my company name here. But if I need to, I can change to a different sender if I want this campaign to come from a different name and different address. Scrolling down, I can input the subject of my email. And I also have the option to use merge tags to personalize the subject line. So maybe I want to insert the person's first name and I might say, you're going to love this update. And, you know, there are some studies that show using people's names in subject lines helps improve the open rate. I can also input preview text. This is sort of text that is displayed underneath the subject. And if you don't fill this in, this just actually is going to default to the first content or text that shows in the email. But if I want to, I can I can customize this and say May 2024 newsletter. And now I can start to create my email. I can choose to start my email from scratch. I can use a template that I've already created, or I can use the HTML editor. So in this case, I'm going to just use the create new option. And Pipedrive has given me a bunch of templates that I can choose from. I can customize these as well. So if you do want to, rather than starting from scratch, pick one of these nice designs, you can, you can do so. So I might choose um, this one here, looks pretty nice. And so now I'm in the content editor where I can actually start to customize the text, the images and the general design of my email. So I can click on any of these elements and I can say May 2024 newsletter so I can change the text. On the right hand side, I've got all my design options and controls. So if I want to change this text color, I can put in a hex code or I can choose a color here. I might click on this other element, this image, for example, and I'm on the right hand side, I can change the image, I can upload my own logo or image. So there are a lot of design options and controls on the right hand side. I just need to go through each of these elements. I can change the text, I can change colors, font sizes. I'm not going to go through all of that now. Uh, the other thing that I do want to show is on this content tab, this is where I can bring in new elements to add to my email. So maybe up here, I want to put in some um, social icons. I can bring this social element uh, down here and I can bring in a row of social icons. I can click on that element and I can put in the link to my Facebook page, Instagram, X and so on. There are lots of useful elements. I can put in buttons for, you know, like this register now button, uh, getting people to book a call or make some purchase. I can bring in images. I can put in videos and I'm going to spend, I would spend some time now, obviously just making sure I get the email looking really nice. At the bottom of the email, you'll see there's the email footer. And if you're a bit confused by what you're seeing here, you don't need to change any of this. This, these are merge tags and you can see the sending 
company name, company address is all gonna be dynamically inserted here and that's pulled from those company settings that we input earlier. If I want to, I can change the unsubscribe text and so maybe I want to make that a bit, a bit smaller. So unsubscribe, there we go. Now, once I'm happy with the layout and the design of my email, I can click the preview button if I just wanna get sort of a nice clean preview and I can see what it looks like on desktop or on mobile. If I'm gonna use this same design again, maybe for next month's newsletter, you can also save this as a template. That way I've got my own template saved now with my own company colors, logos, images, and I don't have to start from scratch every single time. Uh, once I'm happy again, I'm gonna click save and close. Okay, we're nearly there. With my email ready to go, I can choose to send a test email if I want to. This is really useful if I actually want to send an email to myself to see what the email would look like in my actual email inbox. I think that's always worth doing. The final couple of decisions I can make, shall I send this now? In which case I can just click the send button and I can deliver this immediately. Or I can schedule this to send at a specific date and time. And finally, and I would highly recommend turning this on, you can choose to track email opens and whether links are clicked. This is gonna be really useful later. I can bring up some reports to see what was my open rate and click through rate. Once I've sent my email, I can see a bit of a summary of the, the email performance here, or I can click into it. Now this is just my demo account, so there's not really any data here, but I can click into a report to see how many people was the email sent to, how many people opened it, how many people clicked links, what was the performance over time, which links got the most clicks, which regions or countries did people open the email from, and I can go to recipients tab and actually see a breakdown of which recipients opened or clicked or unsubscribed from that particular email. And one of the nice things about sending campaigns from Pipedrive is I can come to a contact like this, and if I go to this engagement tab, I can see when did this person subscribe, I can see what emails they've received, and I can expand it and see how many times did they open that particular email, or if they clicked different links, and so on. So this is really nice, this actually supports my sales team, and maybe I've got my marketing team sending content, sending newsletters, and Myself as a salesperson, I can look at this and I can see, oh look, he's engaging with our content. Maybe it's worth me following up and re-engaging with this person. So there you have it. That is a look at how to get started with campaigns in Pipedrive. As I said at the start, I think campaigns is a great option for any people who are already using Pipedrive and you want a simple, easy way to be able to send newsletters and nurture emails to your prospects or to your customers without having to use extra software and integrating third-party services. If you need help with Pipedrive, click the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive consulting options. Or if you haven't signed up for Pipedrive yet, please contact us via our website. We are an authorized Pipedrive reseller and we can offer you the best pricing on your Pipedrive subscription. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.